Hi, I'm Mark. Um, from the beginning, I knew that I wanted to play with simple tools and simple techniques. Um, one of those techniques, like at the very beginning, like this is virtually student work, was to learn how to spin wool. Um, sorry. Uh, so one of the things I knew from the beginning was that I wanted to use simple tools, simple techniques. Um, so I learned how to spin wool. Uh, I very quickly then realised that the materials were also an important issue in the way I was making. Um, so rather than spinning wool, I started spinning these things, uh, which were uh, very intrinsic to my time and place. I wanted to use materials that were in keeping with who I was and where I was living. So I began making plastic bag necklaces. Um, these are incorporating silver um, beads, so to speak. Uh, this is some of my very early work. Uh, so going uh, with the spinning theme uh, was just simple uh, basic tools. Uh, the wooden one on the on your left is the drop spindle. Um, it's quite an old archaic tool. The middle one, that's a spindle as well. So uh, using a simple technique also means that it's open to variations, it's open to adaptation, which is why I could use the plastic bags. Um, action shots, uh, cutting the bags into shred, into thin strips that can be stretched and then spun. That's the spinning tool in use. Uh, it's quite a beautiful process, uh, so it was something that I actually enjoyed uh, applying. Gradually though, the plastic bag supply dried up. I can blame the green movement for that. Um, so I was looking for similar materials. Um, again, just throwaway materials. So the majority of these are made out of plastic bottles, like shampoo bottles or um, ice cream topping bottles. And obviously I was becoming very attached to my materials. Um, ironic that uh, these, this rubbish also then, for me, became very precious. So yeah, these are from Wendy's, the ice cream people, they would have been going in the bin. Um, once I washed out the tons of topping, I was able to cut them into, into threads, uh, sorry, uh, strips, uh, wrap them around the silver core that makes this bracelet. Um, those layers are fused with heat. So, uh, it's a high density polyethylene plastic. Uh, gradually though, I decided I needed to keep moving, work with different plastics. I definitely adopted plastic as one of my special materials. I definitely adopted the throwaway as, as a specific uh, interest of mine. So I tried things like broken appliances. It was an ex another experimental process and also uh, a matter of going out, collecting, looking for what materials can be found out there. Um, cigarette filters, uh, food boxes uh, were some of the things I experimented with. A little, uh, do most people know that cigarette filters are actually plastic? Um, these two brooches are made out of that exact combination of materials, uh, expanded polystyrene and cellulose acetate from the, from the cigarette filters. I developed a process where I could manipulate the plastic, uh, the expanded polystyrene. It's a reaction uh, that shrinks it to about one third or a half the size. So that was a uh, your standard uh, cafeteria coffee cup. Uh, so again, focusing on simple techniques, simple tools. Uh, this this uh, shrinking process occurs within a sealed. Uh, container like the one here. Uh, other things I might use is just standard scissors, rulers, brush, um, cleaning gear like um, often these things come in with a bit of uh, dirt etc seeing as they've already been thrown away. Uh, so one issue with this material, the expanded polystyrene, is that it's almost always white. So I had to look at ways I could colour it. Uh, one problem with white jewellery is that it tends to get dirty. So here's one way I could do that. Grinding stones. Uh, these stones were taken out of some old broken earrings, uh, making a powder, then applying it to the expanded polystyrene. Usually I would apply that colour before the shrinking process. Uh, so this is uh, malachite that's coating the uh, expanded polystyrene.
and other materials uh, that I would often find broken blinker light covers from cars that I can pick up off the street uh, is what makes this orange one uh, again that's on the base of the expanded polystyrene definitely focusing on the expanded polystyrene these days uh, gradually I realized I needed a, a better way to cut my shapes better than just using a scalpel uh, so some wood, some screws, nuts and bolts, and a mobile, uh, an old mobile charger, uh, made me a hot wire cutter. Um, a simple tool again. It also, like the main innovation here, was that I could actually cut uh, geometric shapes to more precision, so that I could fit them together, and that I could also uh, make a larger number of repeating units. Um, in jewellery, that's something that is quite common. Uh, so this is a brooch. Uh, the next one, I think, is a necklace. Uh, so say the red pieces on, on your right, uh, they were cut as discs, quite easy cutting discs with the hot wire cutter. You can just pin the, the, the polystyrene down, turn it through the wire. So just made my job a little bit more enjoyable. Uh, the red, by the way, is uh, from brake light covers, again, picked up off the street. Um, this is where I really appreciated the shortcut that the hot wire cutter enabled uh, because each piece, each link is made from two pieces and I think there's maybe 40 or 60 links uh, of, of that chain. So I think I'll be cutting, shredding, shrinking polystyrene until I can't get it for free anymore. <laughs>